I greetings from Pakistan. I'm Mohammed Moi, and uh, I'm going to be presenting on how to set up wet lab and how to run it. And I'm thankful to the Joshi Institute for organizing this meeting, Pedagogo. And uh, I think uh, setting up a wet lab is a very challenging task initially to set up with, but this is something which is very necessary for all the residents. I'm working at King Edward Medical University in Lahore in Pakistan. It's uh, great to be here to be working with the Ophthalmic Education Foundation. So what are the first steps? You The five steps, you set up the physical space, establish appropriate faculty at curriculum, obtaining the practice eye, then you have stabilizing the practice eye, preparing the eye, and funding the wet lab. So those are the steps which are needed and we'll go through them one by one. So what is the physical space we need to have? So first you need to have a wet lab room, instruments, a coordinator who can be a separate person or a resident or a chief resident and cleaning facility of that area. And uh, this is a, a diagram taken from uh, Mishra's paper in which you can see what we need is a space for two people or uh, a person who's going to be observing and the person who's going to be doing it. Either you need a microscope with a camera or a TV scope. Ideally, I think with a recording, it would be the best to go through uh, the procedure and step with a person. And then FACO machine and tubings are necessary and they should be so set that the, the trainer can see and the, the person who's performing it can do it easily. You can see there's a table in which the legs go in so he can do the microscope with a foot pedal and the FACO handpiece. The instruments is a complete cataract set. Then you need to have sutures, tensile nylon, vitrile, gloves, blades, dustbin, refrigerator, microwave, storage cupboards, and air conditioner. These are certain things which we are very used to and uh, there's something new expect, except for the microwave that is used to make sort of induced cataract in the in, in goat's eye or porcine eyes. We'll go through that in later part of the presentation. Then we come on to a cataract set, standard set with suture dyeing, forcep, McPherson's, needle holders, Simcoe cannula, Venice scissors, handles. You can see all of them usually. So the next step is the wet lab curriculum. That is the most important thing. You know, the first years, um, I think the aim is to know all the instruments on the cataract tray, use similar instruments in the wet lab and have first year call for the next instrument in the senior resident case. Then we go on to the next step, which is demonstrate placement of a 10 nylon suture. Uh, either a porcine caliber or you can place uh, at the end for resident or, or attending. So these are the steps you can do in wet lab and you can have them do in the OR as well. And basically what you're trying to do is uh, come up with hand-eye coordination under the microscope. The third one is demonstrate the ability to fold and place an IUL. And you can place it in the animal eye or you can place it at the end of the surgery in the OR as well. I think that is one of the simplest procedures you can do uh, under guidance when you're, when you're doing in the OR. And knowing the type and use of OVDs, use both cohesive and dispersive OVDs and you can that, use that uh, in the coordinated OR experience. And then they demonstrate the ability to remove OVD with IA. I think that is can be done in the o, in the lab and in the OR experience. If you learn FACO in the reverse in the OR, it, it is the best. I think the easiest is to do IA when you are inside uh, when when you put the IUL in, and then uh, that is some of the things you can do a hydration of the wound at that time as well. Then you come onto the second year curriculum. Now you want to go on to more complex procedures such as doing a capsular axis to use it. For that, you need to use a fixative modified porcine eyes. We'll go through that in later steps. And either you can do it with a needle uh, or a cystotome and, uh, or you can learn with uh, utrata forceps. The second is to demonstrate the ability to place a groove in the nucleus. So you're slowly going with the FACO that is the easiest part to make the groove. Cracking is becomes difficult. So then the second uh, part is to demonstrate the ability to use the second instrument or the dialer or a chopper or 
any instrument with which you break that eye. And the, I think that is difficult to do in, in animal eyes because they are very, very soft nuclei unless you make them hard. But in synthetic eyes, probably they've come up with different grades of nuclei which, which you can practice. And then you go on to demonstrate the ability to cure, create a clear corneal wound. So you see, this is something which is coming at a later stage because if you start, because this is something which we think it's easy, but it's not that easy because the wound is not good enough at the start, then, this, then all the surgery does not go well. Then uh, for the third year curriculum, you understand the FACO parameters, how you work with the bottle height, how the wound leaks, and how you control the vacuum and flow rate. So you can use it when the, you are in the OR, adjust the machine parameters with the attending surgeon. And then the certain complex procedures such as demonstration of gapsular tension ring that can be done in the animal eye. Then you go on how to you obtain the eye. That's pretty simple. So you, uh, one is either if you have a retrieving center in your own hospital, you can have a rejected or unfit donor cornea. Or the other thing is you can use a goat's eye or you can use porcine eyes uh, as well. And the third is a wax or artificial eyes made up of uh, from uh, different materials. So the uh, fourth step is stabilizing devices. So you need either a styrofoam head, which with the eye stabilized, it's pinned to the styrofoam. The cons, it's the eye is very unstable. The head can torque with little manipulation. So why do you actually need the styrofoam head? Because you need to mimic that hand placement during cataract surgery. So this is the simplest procedure. The next one is an auto device with a small funnel bulb holder with a vacuum suction embedded in the styrofoam head. It can be difficult to achieve authentic eye stability, but it's more stability with a simple uh, styrofoam head. So here is the second step, the auto device. Then you can have a Mandel's eye mount, which is a plastic bulb holder in which you can put that eye. You can see that suction syringe is there. With that, you can uh, make uh, some suction over there and that tends to make the eye hard. The only drawback is that you do not have the head or the mannequin head, so you cannot uh, sort of practice the placement of your hands during surgery. And the fourth one is, I think the more complex one is a labellar device, which is a Porello device with multiple parts, including a plexi, car, plexi glass bulb holder and a red reflector plate and a PVC base support. It's a complicated step, allows training of all anterior segment ocular procedures. Red re reflector plate simulates intraocular optics. So this is the thing you can see. This is can also be used to check intraocular pressure with a Perkins or, or a slit lamp as well. But this is something which is very useful. Then you go on to something which is spring action apparatus for fixation of Eyeball. So this is called SAFE, and this was used uh, initially by Ramakrishnan and he, for when they were doing LASIK surgery. Here you can see you've got a metal holder, you put the eye, and there's a suction uh, and, and the bottom part, which makes the eye hard, which you can see. And then there's a mannequin head in which you put that thing, and so you can do that surgery easily over there. So this is a good setup to use for spring action fixation. Then you can have a simpler setup. If you do not have many things, then you can have a film roll fixed with cotton rolls used to hold the goat's eye, and that is mounted on a rectum, rectangular thermocol, and that's been shown by Sangupta in a training model for phaco emulsification. Then you go on to teaching and training devices. I think all of you are working in India, so it's the Madhu Innovating Possibilities. That company is doing a great job, and you have the iStand Plus, iStand with a fixation head, or you're going to have a FACO practice eye with a fixation head. So you've got uh, this thing. You've got an eye stand, eyeball stand, and you can have a FACO practice eye. So it's available over there. And if you have access to that and the funding is there, then it's obviously, I think, wonderful to have a do surgery practice on that. Then you go on to preparing the eye, then fixing the capsule of the animal eye and inducing cataract in a clear lens. So how do you fix the capsule? Anterior capsule of the pig is significantly thicker and it's more elastic and feels more like a pediatric capsulotomy. So a mixture of 0.3 cc of formaldehyde and 0.7 cc of an OVD uh, mixture overnight at room temperature. And this mixture is placed in the 
porcine anterior capsule, the capsule will markedly stiffen to make more closely resemble the human senile capsule. So methods of inducing a cataract in an animal eye, microwave energy, which we said that porcine eyes for 90 seconds, quick cataract, but not very dense. Then you can have chemical induction in which fixative solution of formalin and propanol or cataracts of different grades can be generated, but it, this tends to be more costlier. Or you can have a cataract surgery implanted into the capsule. So you remove or sort of vacuum out the, the capsule, the the cortex from the animal eye and then put a sort of dense cataract which is removed from an intracap or an extra capsular surgery in, in a patient and put there and then you can do uh, the FACO with it. That's, that's a good thing. And then the last thing which you need to have the funding for the wet lab. So donation from ophthalmic surgical companies, expired products in operating groups and grants to conducts the studies. So you can see these are the different steps which we go through when we want to set up a wet lab. But I think the most important step is your determination and structuring the thing and sort of going on to collaborate with all the department that this is something we are going to done and this is a must for all the residents to do during the first year, second year, and they're not going to get surgery until they show competency in that. I think that is one way of forcing that uh, uh, use of a uh, wet lab. Obviously, I always tell my residents that it is what we want is that you should be a safe surgeon. So whenever you do surgery, you do not lose your confidence doing surgery because you were not able to perform good and you came up with complications. So you can come up with any complication in a wet lab surrounding, but you don't want to have that done in when you're doing live surgery. So, so obtaining proficiency in surgery cannot be done by reading textbooks. So the next step you need to have is hands-on training in the real operating room or in a simulated physical environment. And virtual reality simulators are in training uh, future surgeons. And we all know it's a very expensive machine, but they are very good at uh, giving you different tasks and different challenges to practice surgery. But until they are not available to each and all of the training center, Wet lab remains an important part of cataract surgery at this time. Thank you very much for listening and uh, I wish you all the best for this course.